what we're gonna do today, I've got Mr. Summers here helping us. We're gonna clean these big logs up and these logs are a little bit more wool now. These logs are a little bit more than my two mules can handle by themselves and we've got a little bit of uphill drag. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a cradle hitch on the logs and hook to the cart. And then once I get hooked to the log and get it set, Mr. Summers is gonna bring his team around and hook on the front. But the first thing we gotta do, and y'all come right here, I'll show you. The first thing we gotta do is lay a piece of wood down right here. And then I'm gonna take my swamp hook and I'm gonna roll that log up over on top of it. And what that'll do is it'll get the butt end up where I can get my chains on it and set my chains. And I'll show y'all how I'm gonna do that. Now y'all, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna set this swamp hook. I'm gonna set the swamp hook in the log first and let them roll it over on this little old stick I've got here and that'll get the butt in up where we can get the chains on it. got it up now we can get our chain on it a lot easier now one chain come right over here sis you got to have two two chains with a slip hook and you want one slip hook's got to be over here on this side because you gotta choke it down kind of low. Like that. And then we need one more chain. And then it'll go on this side. I got that one. It just goes over here. And then, then you hook these two tag ends to the log cart. And what that's gonna do, y'all, if we get it hooked tight, with them two chains pulling down low, you get a lower center of pull. It's gonna give you more lift on the log. The more lift you get on the log, the less drag it makes, the easier it is for the team to pull. see if I would have hooked one chain and choked it here on top this is a straight line to the log cart you wouldn't get no lift but since we come off the sides uh, since we come off the sides you'll get a whole lot more lift Now the team is hooked, and I'm just gonna secure my lines here where they'll where they'll stay. 
give them plenty of slack where they can pull because the way we're going to do it is a little different probably than a lot of you have seen working four we're going to work four with one line and when you're working four with one line you ride the wheel mule the driver rides the lead uh, wheel mule and then your front team is drove with one line and your front team is uh let me show you all this come right around here <clears throat> come right around here in front here see this ring right under here this ring is on there that's what we hook the stretchers to the front team to and uh it's pretty quick and easy to do you know once you get rolling and kind of get in the swing of things uh you know two people working two teams and then whenever you get a big load or a big log like we're doing now just bring your your uh one line team in here hook them on the d-ring on the end of the tongue and roll on you little pearl pat you whoop you you whoop 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 you little bit pearl all right Now y'all, like anything else, when you're working a team, a single, three mules, four mules, horses, whatnot, uh, you've got to get everybody kind of together. And in a perfect world, when you start a load like I did there, you would want the front team and the back team to go together. We've only worked Mr. Summer's mules and my mules four like this just a couple times. So uh, they still haven't got quite fine-tuned enough to go together uh this is the smallest log out of this tree that we're pulling out now this will be the smallest log we want to start on it first just to kind of get everybody warmed up uh but on these bigger logs especially going right up through here this is a little bit of a hill up through here all the way to the truck and you know my mules could have probably pulled this log here by itself fairly easy but going up this hill with the extra mules on the front it just makes a big difference Okay, uh, now see, when we run it up on that log down there before, when we hitched it, it it's real tight right now. Uh, the chains is tight, you wouldn't ever get them loose. But the way I designed this cart, we uh, put a trip mechanism in here. Let me get this out of the way where I can show y'all. We put this little trip mechanism in here right here. Uh, and you take this handle See how it, it, it lets it loose? And that is a lifesaver. A real lifesaver. It will take us, it will take us forever to get this thing, to get it off if we didn't have this. Okay, so she's reset. I just got to unhook the chain. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. 
Now my mules are sensitive to my voice and I kind of had to hold uh, Kate back, uh, you know, on starting a load just because they would want to go first. They're more sensitive to my voice versus Mr. Summer's mules. Uh, but ideally, y'all, like I said, you want them all kind of go together. You don't want one team pulling and one team slagging and all that kind of stuff. So uh, what I did is I held Kate's over check just a little. Uh, and you know kind of held her back just enough to where mr summer's team could tighten up and then as they tighten up i let them all go together and y'all the more you work a you know two teams like this they become as one they get to where they'll work just like a power mule does versus uh working a single you know when you work one mule by itself uh which is good for them by the way when you work one mule by itself and then put it with a team and it's never worked in a team they got to learn to work together just as these four mules here has to learn to work together now y'all see me stop them several times right up through here uh, in the video and that is to give them breaks, let them blow, build their wind back up and then we we'll go on. Now, when you're loaded, trying to get them all four together is not too hard of a deal because, you know, you'll have a little bit more load than what the back team can handle on their own, and they kind of tend to learn to wait on the front team to tighten up so everybody kind of pulls their fair share. Uh, the hardest part is going back empty like we're doing now. Uh, you have to, like, you know, if you got a slower team out front, which is what you should do, you should put your slower, more experienced animals out front. And uh, sometimes that can prove to be a challenge, you know, with the wheel team because they'll want to run up on the front team and, you know, whatnot, walk faster and get up on them and whatnot. So you kind of have to hold them back. Uh, and Mr. Summers here, he wanted to ride back in the woods with me anyway. Uh, so he's got mine holding the lines on them, kind of holding mine back, and I'm driving his team there. We're cheating a little bit. 
Uh, but until we get them well broke to this type of uh, setup here, this is just kind of what we've been doing. And Mr. Summers is a big help, y'all. I enjoy working with him. He's been good to me, you know, to help me. And, uh, you know, I just enjoy spending time with him. Now, a little bit about this saddle that's on this uh, on Cape, my lead mule there. Uh, this is a MacBride saddle. It's got D-rings on the four corners. And it's got leather straps on those uh, D-rings coming off that goes to the uh, britching on the rear. And then it hooks into the trace chains on the front. And it keeps the saddle uh, upright on the lead wheel mule while I'm driving. Now, for all of you that's been wondering how in the world I get up here on these mules, <laughs> this is how I do it. And uh, getting off is easy. I just fall off. I do need to get some wider stirrups for the saddle, though, for my big old wide foot because my foot don't fit in the stirrups very good. But anyway, that's how I get on and off. Now y'all, this is pin oak. It's about the heaviest species of red oak here in Tennessee that we have. This is a 10 foot, 330 foot uh, log that we're pulling out here now. It's a pretty good load on the mules. And like I say, you know, getting them all together uh, and getting them to pull at the same time and maintaining a steady pull or whatnot, that can be challenging at times, you know, and the more you work them, the better they get. And speaking of different species, like uh, this pin oak here, of red oak it's roughly 15 pounds per board foot and like i say this is a 330 foot log uh or popular popular logs are like nine pounds a foot so there's quite a bit of difference in the weight 
you know, in the species of trees, lighter hardwood, like basswood, poplar, cottonwood, uh, etc. You know, that's a lighter species of hardwood versus like red oak, white oak, maple, beech, hickory. You know, those are all the heavy species. And especially coming up this little hill right here, this is when we need that front wheel assist for Mr. Summer's mule. And you'll see, you know, they kind of have to scratch a little to, to get on up this hill. Uh, but I'm thankful to have them out front for sure. It made the difference in us being able to get them and not get them. Now y'all, one thing I want to note here is that these shorter, fatter logs will pull harder than say a longer, narrower log of the same footage. In other words, if you had a 330 foot log that was say like 14 foot long or 16 foot long that was smaller in diameter, same footage, just a longer, narrower log, it will pull easier than these shorter, fat logs will. And I can't explain the science behind it. You know, it's got a lot to do with friction and ground contact and whatnot. Uh, but I can tell you that it's definitely different. Uh, also, another thing that causes them to pull a lot different is the bark on the trees. Uh, some trees have a smoother bark, where some trees have more of a rougher, 
coarser type bark and obviously i mean common sense will tell you that coarser bark is going to pull harder ground conditions has a lot to do with how hard one pulls you know drier conditions with uh, coarse bark is going to make it pull hard versus being a little slick when it's muddy or whatnot so there's a lot that goes into it y'all but we've got enough mule power on the front end right now to manhandle these big ones out and again i'm very thankful to mr summers for coming out and hanging out with us and uh, helping us get these behemoths out and I'm also thankful to my oldest girl, Savannah, for doing the videoing. And Skylar, they've helped us a bunch. Once you get four mules that will go together, y'all, and gets in tune with each other, you can move some real big loads. We actually pulled about 1,600 feet, y'all, in five drags. And to give you an idea, we usually try to shoot for about 1,200 feet of heavy hardwood on the log truck when we haul a load in. So we got out more than a load just with five pulls. Well, y'all, that's about it for us. That's gonna wrap us up for today. Uh, here Mr. Summers is taking the mules out. And uh, I just wanted to say thank y'all for watching and to all the new subscribers, thank y'all. Have a good one.